Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. I'm Susie, I'm an alchemist for your soul and for your business. I help my clients to fully align to their soul's purpose, the energies of the moon and their gifts and talents. I help them to create an aligned business that lights them up and creates abundance both for themselves and for others. Today we're going to work with the energies of the dark moon and rose quartz. So let's have a look at rose quartz. So I wanted to show you a couple of pieces of rose quartz. So this is a natural rose quartz. Okay, so this hasn't been tumbled um, like you see the tumble stones. So this is a piece of tumbled rose quartz. So this is just a disc. So this will be used for something like um, chakra work for placing on your chakra. I also have here um, a rose quartz pendulum. So rose quartz can be made into anything, jewellery, all of those different things. And I also have here some very, very tiny rose quartz chips, which we're going to use a little bit later to create some luxurious bath salts. So rose quartz is the crystal of universal love, love, self-love and compassion. Rose quartz is known as the heart stone and is connected to our heart chakra. This powerful crystal teaches us deep compassion, the art of mothering oneself and the harmony that healing can bring to us. The heart chakra is one of the most important avenues to align. It's where we learn to trust, to give and to receive the world in all her splendor. Our heart chakra is really important to have in alignment. So along with working wonders in itself when it comes to soulful healing, rose quartz boasts beautiful healing powers to the body as well. And this crystal is often used in helping healing the heart from pain and trauma left from deep emotional wounds. Rose quartz is also used for those who crave more love in their lives, not necessarily romantic love, but more in finding a deep sense of compassion and care in the world as well, especially if it comes from one of the most important sources who can bring it ourselves. So one of the most stunning rose quartz healing properties is its ability to crack open the heart and put back in alignment so that you feel connected, comforted and open to all the possibilities that a joyous life can bring you. So it's a really, really powerful crystal. And another beautiful benefit of rose quartz is her deep vibrational and attunement with the goddess energy as well. So rose quartz is connected to the divine feminine, meaning that it carries an aura of compassion and peace. If you feel you need to learn how to soothe or to be healed by your own hands and to uplift your own potential into the goddess sphere, rose quartz is the crystal that is going to take you there. So today we're going to use the rose quartz crystal in alignment with the dark moon. Okay, so the dark moon is the last few days of the waning moon. So the waning moon is when the moon is getting smaller and is disappearing from our skies. Okay, it lasts for approximately a day. Okay, and it is the day before the new moon. So it's the last part of the lunar cycle and it literally lasts for a day so there's only one day to do this particular ritual whereas all the other phases last for a few days okay so the dark moon is very much about rest relaxation introspection self-care and self-love the dark moon's spiritual meaning is associated with stillness and wisdom all the wisdom that we need comes from within us okay it's, like I said, still connected to the previous lunar cycle. So it's the last few days of the cycle, okay? And is definitely a time to rest, recharge, um, and really take care of ourselves ready for the new moon the following day. So there really is no better time for some self-love than at the dark moon. The more that we fill ourselves with love, the more love spills over to our friends, to our family, to our community, to the environment, to Mother Earth, and so on. So today I'm going to teach you to do a 
um, Dark Moon Rose Quartz Spiritual Bath Ritual. Okay, so if you've never taken a spiritual bath, then you are definitely in for a treat. It's a unique kind of bathing ritual that dates back to ancient times. And though many aspects of it have changed, the idea still remains the same. And a spiritual bath can really help you to cleanse your, your mind, your body and your spirit. Okay, so not only are we cleansing our bodies like a regular bath, but a spiritual bath goes much deeper than that. And it requires you to be present and mindful. Okay, and it involves specific elements to enhance um, your bath with the intention that you want to bring for yourself. Okay, so some of these elements that we can add to a spiritual bath are, of course, the crystals, herbs, oils, salts, and so much more. So a spiritual bath can also help to imbue the bather with certain desired benefits, okay, like manifestation or bring about more abundance and creativity. So today we're going to create a spiritual bath to bring in more self-love and love for Mother Earth. So I'm going to show you how to make the bath salts and then I will tell you how to do the ritual. Okay, so let's make our bath salts. I know there looks a lot of ingredients here. You don't need to use all of them. Um, these are just some examples of what you can use to create your own dark moon bath salts. So we're going to start with a glass jar. Always important to use a glass jar because we're using essential oils. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just cleanse with some Palo Cento, my glass jar. Of course, it's washed and cleaned. And then we just want the smoke to remove any negative energies from processing, from being stored in shops and, you know, touched by anybody else. So we're just going to do that quickly. I have already done it. So I should put my Palo Cento to one side. Now, I'm going to talk you through the ingredients because I do have quite a lot here. So I have here half a cup of Epsom salts. Okay, always good for a nice spa bath. So I'm going to put that into the dish. You do not have to use all of these different things. I like to have a good mixture of salts in the baths that I'm making. I have half a cup of Himalayan pink salt. I love the pink salt purely for the colour. Um, obviously, it has amazing health benefits, but it also makes the bath salts a really nice colour when they are in the jar. And I'm also adding a quarter of a cup of coarse sea salt. Okay, so if you only have sea salt, only use sea salt. You don't need to go out and buy anything special. If you want to use sea salt and Himalayan pink salt, that's absolutely fine too. You don't have to have all of the different salts. Okay, I have them all because I make a lot of bath salts. So we're going to give that a good mix. And you can see that the, um, the Epsom salts really bring a nice glow, a nice shimmer to the mixture. Now this is another optional ingredient. This is baking soda. Okay, it's a quarter of a cup of baking soda. Baking soda is really, really good for your skin. Okay, and it will give you that, that really soft skin feeling when you get out of the bath. So again, it's something you can add if you want to. Leave it out if you don't have any or you don't want to add it. Okay, so that's our basic salt. So we're going to give that a really good mix. Okay, so let's talk about crystals. So obviously, as this is a rose quartz dark moon bath oil, we're going to add some little bits of rose quartz. So I've got these little tiny chips here. So I'm going to add a few of those into the mix. Now we're talking um, self-love. This bath salts is all about self-love. So I'm going to add some amethyst. So again, I have some little amethyst crystals to add into the mix there. So some of the crystals that, that you can use for self-love are aventurine, 
amethyst, red jasper. There's lots of different crystals that you can use. So I've just chosen to keep this really, really simple and use amethyst and rose quartz. Now, if you don't have little chips like this, you can just add in whatever tumble stones that you have. They don't have to be the small chips. Okay, so I am also adding a moonstone crystal because this is great for self-love as well. So this is a little moonstone that I'm going to place on top. So I'm not going to mix this into the mixture. I'm going to place it on top. So some other things that you may wish to add. Rose petals. For me, rose is all about love. Okay, so I'm going to crush up a few of these rose petals. So these are dried. You must always use dried. Otherwise, your mixture will go mouldy. Okay, so these are ones I've just dried from the garden. So I'm going to add quite a few of those, just break some of them up. And I am going to also use some lavender because for me that says love, it says abundance. So this is also lavender from the garden that I've just dried. Again, must be dried. So you probably want about a teaspoon of each of those. You know, measurements aren't so important because you can make it look how you want it to look okay so if you feel you haven't got enough in there and they're not showing up enough add some more okay it's all about the intention okay so i would like some more rose in there so i'm gonna just drop in a little bit more rose make it nice and bright okay and might even drop in a little bit more lavender. Okay, so that's probably two teaspoons of each that I put in this quantity. So now what I want to do is add some fragrance as well. Again, this is optional. Okay, it's up to you if you want fragrance or, you know, you might want to get fragrance from the candles that you use in your ritual. Okay, but I'm going to add fragrance to this. So I'm going to add four drops of rose. I'm going to add four drops of jasmine and I'm going to add four drops of lavender. And I'm going to give that a really good stir. Really make sure that that is mixed in so that with every spoonful that you put in the bath, you can really smell it. So give it a really, really good mix. And then we should spoon it into our jar. So if you want to have a nice bath and you don't want to make too much mess, okay, you don't want to clear up all the mess of the petals and everything afterwards, then I would suggest using like a little organza bag like this. And then you can just empty it and wash it and use it again really depends how you want to do it. You know, everything is about intention. So you can add the, the essential oils that you want to add to this mixture. If you've only got lavender, then put 12 drops of lavender in. Okay, if you've only got something like geranium or bergamot, then just use those. There are lots of different herbs that you can use for self-love and essential oils. So use what feels right for you. Use what feels like you're giving yourself some self-love, some self-care. I've got a little bit left over, so I will put this in a bag ready for Dark Moon on a Monday. So that's our little jar. And then the Moonstone, I'm just going to put on top and seal it. Okay, so when I go to have a bath, I like to not clean up afterwards, I will put two tablespoons of the salt mixture in here along with the moonstone. Okay, so every time I will take the moonstone out and put it back in. Now, you want to leave these for a couple of days just for, um, you know, the magic of the crystals to infuse, for the herbs and the oils to infuse. So if you can make it a couple of days in advance or at least 24 hours, then that's absolutely fantastic. I know with, with the dark moon, like time is of the essence, we only have one day that we can use this. So I certainly wouldn't make more than that up because you know that's going to last you a few months. So two tablespoons of this into your bag, ready to put into your bath and for your bath ritual. 
So don't forget to pick your crystals. If you want to add more crystals to this, that's absolutely fine, but that's what it looks like in your bag. If you want to add more crystals, I do talk about that in the ritual a little bit later um, because that's absolutely fine too. So do remember to label your jar and look how beautiful that looks. Can't wait to use it. Okay, so now we have our bath salts ready. Let's prepare for the ritual. So the first thing to do is to prepare the bath. For this dark moon ritual, we're focusing on love. It's a time of giving to ourselves, to others, and to the planet. When preparing for this spiritual bath, you'll want to lay the groundwork for welcoming in loving energy to make sure that you and your space are physically clean. So clean and declutter your bathroom and of course your bath and take a quick shower or bath to cleanse your body. We then want to fill the tub and gather all the materials that we want to use within our ritual. When you fill your bath with water, this is when you add the salts that we previously made into the bath. It's also important to create ambience and this is the point where you can stir in extra ingredients along with the bath salt. So take this time to set up anything else that you think will enhance the ambience of your bath or that will transport you into a more peaceful and spiritual place. So this can include candles, it can include crystals, it can include soothing music, incense, opening the window to let in fresh air, um, you know, the sounds of nature. Okay, so um, there are so many things that you can do to really create a peaceful spa-like experience for yourself. You can also smudge your room. So um, when we talk about smudging, it's the burning of sage or palo santo to remove any negative energies and to really uplift our space. There are other herbs that you can burn as well. So what you want to do is light whatever it is that you're using, whether it's sage, palo santo or another herb, and just bring the smoke around the room to cleanse all the energy and then put your smudge stick or your palo santo into um, a fireproof dish and just let it burn out naturally. So like I said, now's the time to add any other ingredients to your bath, like crystals, rose petals, orange slices, anything that you feel complements your bath salts. If you're going to add crystals, just make sure that they are um, suitable for putting in water. Okay, some things are not suitable, so rose quartz is absolutely fine. Um, amethyst is fine, um, and all the crystals like moonstone that I talked about um, in the bath salt video. Okay, so just make sure, so things like pyrite you can't put in a bath. There are some crystals that um, you can't put in water. Okay, so just make sure what you're using, all my suggestions are absolutely perfectly fine to put in your bath. Okay, so you might want to um, add petals and um, slices of orange, lemon, you know, those kind of things, depending on what herbs and oils you have used in your bath sorts okay as you stir in the ingredients into your bath just be mindful and really think about the intentions that you have for this dark moon you can also do um, a peaceful energy visualization and imagine the tub filling up with golden loving light or pink light for uh, love whichever one you want to do you can also say a prayer or a mantra at this time. So before you get into the bath or you're stirring your ingredients, you may want to say a prayer, a blessing, a mantra or an intention out loud. It can be anything you want as long as it aligns with your general intention for this particular spiritual bath. You want to lower yourself into the water, allowing each part of your body to adjust to the temperature and try to keep as much of your body submerged as possible. Do cup your hands and make sure that you pour the water over your head as well because we want to um, open our crown chakra, cleanse our crown chakra and you know really um, get all of that loving energy into our body. While you're doing this, again, you can call in some pink light or golden light um, of universal love 
to help you with this ritual. So I suggest staying in your bath for about 20 to 30 minutes, okay? And you know, while you're there, just try to clear your thoughts. This is all about you. This is about bringing in self-love. It's about bringing in um, love to the planet, to others, to people, you know, in our relationships, for family um, as well. So now would be a really good time to visualize your heart center overflowing with love and going into the earth below you, spreading love across Mother Earth and out into the universe as well. So do try and keep your mind as clear as possible. Just focus on as much as you possibly can, um, you know, what you're doing, what your intention is, um, and bringing that love in for yourself and for others. After your bath, try to um, air dry rather than towel dry so that um, your body can continue to dry and continue to take in the energy of the dark moon. When you're ready, you can get dressed. And I would really suggest that you do something um, relaxful, relaxing even, um, for the rest of the evening. If you really can't, then make sure that you are resting for at least 30 minutes after your bath. Um, but, you know, try and do some other things that are very much about self-love and self-care. This would be a good time to journal and look at how you can bring more self-love into your life um, generally on a day-to-day -day basis, how you can spread more love across um, the planet um, and anything else that came in while you were um, doing this ritual. It's always a good idea to keep notes and keep a journal to um, to reflect on at a later time. So I'd love to know how you enjoyed this DIY home spa ritual for your soul. I'd love to see pictures of your Dark Moon Rose Quartz home spa ritual. And if you'd like to know more about the moon phases and how to work with the phases of the moon to manifest more love, money, abundance, and well-being into your life, then you can join me in my masterclass on Tuesday, the 7th of September, for my free Moon Money Masterclass. In this masterclass, we're going to be looking at all eight phases of the moon, what they represent, and why aligning to the moon is so important. I'll also be giving a new moon tarot reading and teaching you how to set your intentions for the new moon in a new moon ritual. We'll also be looking at the benefits of aligning yourself and your business to the flow and energy of the moon. And there'll also be prizes to be won as well. So I really hope that you enjoyed this um, this little presentation and I hope to see you in the Moon Money Masterclass. Ciao for now.